What am I dressed up as? Right now, I'm just a guy in an eye patch. But now, I'm a pirate. What is a pirate without a ship? It's like a construction worker, but without construction tools. Without it, he's just a guy in a hard hat and a neon vest. Of course, a construction site has tons of tools around. A crane, a jackhammer, hammers, nails, all that stuff. A pirate ship is no different. Of course, with a crane, if you look at this crane and you look at this crane, like, what's the difference? What's the actual difference between these cranes? I don't know. Do you know? I don't know. A pirate ship, look at this ship and you look at this ship, I can tell you some differences between these ships because they were built with different purposes in mind. Most of the time when we imagine a pirate ship, we imagine gigantic boats full of 17 cannons and three masts with a bunch of sails up on them, lots of deck space. But that's pretty rare in the pirating history. Of course, they did exist. Blackbeard's ship, the Queen Anne's Revenge, is one example, but for the most part, most pirates didn't use those big boats. In fact, most pirates in the Caribbean actually used fairly small boats called sloops, or slightly bigger ones called brigantines. Some pirates in the late 17th century even used smaller boats called pinnaces, or even canoes of all things. Obviously, a canoe isn't exactly the pirate vessel that we imagine nowadays. As we know, one of the largest ages of piracy was the Golden Age in the Caribbean. And in the Caribbean Sea, there's a season called Hurricane Season. Inside of Hurricane Season, you guessed it, there's a lot of hurricanes. So the pirates needed to have boats that were able to survive inside of said hurricanes in case things got bad. Let's just say that you wouldn't want to be a canoe if you were in the middle of a hurricane. Although the pirates didn't want to ride out in the seas during hurricanes, they probably had no choice due to the fact that they weren't just allowed anywhere or at any ports, or who knows, maybe they're not even close to a port. So naturally, the ships that they sailed had to be ready for a hurricane in case it happened. With different types of storm sails, a bigger hull, reliable pumps, and most importantly, a functional crew. Of course, there's more to pirate ships than just being able to survive some weather. Lots of different features of a pirate ship have different functionalities that they are picked for. Take the pinnaces that I mentioned earlier. Pinnaces are fairly small boats and so naturally, they're pretty fast too. Smaller ships are usually able to move faster in most scenarios due to the fact that they don't have to displace as much water as a bigger ship like a galleon when moving. A bigger ship with a gigantic hull has to resist a lot of water coming towards it and basically relies solely on sails and wind to move forward. Of course, a pirate ship was more than just a vessel or a way of transportation for the pirates. Take a pirate ship away from a pirate and what is he? Well, he's just like a robber in an eye patch. Pirate ships are super important for how pirates did their jobs. Now, what's the definition of a pirate? A person who robs or commits illegal violence at sea or on the shores of the sea. How does somebody rob at the sea if they aren't on the sea? The pirate ship would make it so that pirates could capture other ships or board other ships, intimidate other ships, which was something that they did very well. Basically, a pirate without a pirate ship isn't a pirate. But you could ask, why does it even matter if you're a pirate? Like I mentioned earlier, robbers are a thing. Why can't you just be a robber? What are the benefits of being a pirate? Because what does a pirate ship matter if there's no benefit to being a pirate? Well, naturally, there's a lot of benefits to being a pirate. Firstly, you make a lot of money. During the golden age of piracy, planes didn't exist yet. Trains didn't even exist yet. Almost all valuables were transported over the sea, so if you were going to be robbing anybody, people at sea were your best bet. But financial gain isn't even the only benefit. Overall, boats are really fast. There's not going to be a lot that people can do against you when you're riding away in a boat at high speeds. Not to mention that there's not much that they can do against you anyway, since they're in the middle of the ocean. They can't retreat anywhere and they can't get help from anybody, so they're basically all yours for the picking. Basically, money's in the pirating business, and efficiency was in the pirating business. There's no reason not to be in the pirating business if you were gonna rob people. So naturally, the pirate ship is fitted out with tons of different tools to help the pirates in their sea robbing. Surprisingly though, many of the things on the pirate ship aren't actually there to help out in the robbing itself, more in just getting to the part of the robbing. First we have the steering wheel. Naturally, it steers the ship. Next we have the anchor. It stops the ship. The anchor comes down and lands in the ground and keeps the ship where it is. Then we got the mast. 
The mast is where the sails hang, and what do the sails do, you might ask? Well, the sails are what keeps the forward momentum on the ship. Back in the day, we, they didn't have, you know, motorboats, so the ships were fully powered by the wind. What about the crow's nest up there? What's the crow's nest do? The crow's nest does what you always have seen people do. They're looking out there on the tower. There's, an, there's a boat over there. Let's rob them. Let's rob those guys. That's what the crow's nest is there for. Somebody's up there watching. Of course, there's also tons of storage space under the hull. There was a captain quarters where the captain would be able to hang out, dining halls, all that crap. They, they had to live on these boats. It wasn't just a vessel for them. It was their entire life. So what would the pirates do if they were attacked by a kraken? Okay, well, krakens aren't real, so that was a bad example. But what if the pirates were attacked by another ship? What did they have to defend themselves? Cannons. Cannons are a very powerful weapon. Put the cannonball into cannon. Light the cannon. Shoot the ball. Shoot the ball at the ship. Cannonballs were able to break wood, as we've seen on the Mythbusters. Mythbusters. And of course, like I mentioned, different boats had their own different gains. A bigger boat may be more intimidating, but a smaller boat may be faster. A bigger boat has more room for different tools to use for pirating, but a smaller boat is harder to catch. Take a look at the Somali pirates, the most recent pirates in history. They used mostly small fishing boats called dows. Some people would ask, why don't they just use like a motorboat or something? Well, first of all, they probably didn't have much access to a motorboat. After all, Somalia is not exactly the most financially uh, well-off country. But really, the reasoning is because stealth. Lots of people use dows. Lots of people use fishing boats. There's no proof that you're a pirate if you're sitting in a dow, but a pirate can be sitting in a dow. Living in 21st century America, it's a lot harder to get away with such crimes as piracy, so sometimes being straight out in the open and just looking like everybody else is your best option. Many pirate ships had large crews, like over 200, lots of people. The fact that they need that many people to operate a boat of this caliber just goes to show how much of a crucial part of pirating it is. Now let's take a look at Blackbeard's ship, the Queen Anne's Revenge. You may remember me talking about this ship earlier as it being one of the bigger boats in pirating history. And taking a look at it, you gotta agree. In this book by Angus Constam, we have a diagram here of what Blackbeard's boat would have looked like. Of course, we've got lanterns, we've got even Blackbeard's flag here. Take a look, we've got the all sorts of different types of cannons. They're listed as different things. You've got the minion. You've got converted gun port. You've got the eight petter gun. Original gun port. You've got the saker. Looking around, you've got a, the poop deck. I was quite curious about what the poop deck actually is because a lot of times you hear swab the poop deck, but what really is it? The poop deck is actually the top part of the ship that goes above the cabin in the back. It's on, on the stern part of the boat, which is of course the back, and its name actually comes from the French word for stern, which is La Poupe. It even says here that they had three anchors, which is pretty insane. It lists that there was a ton of storage space and cabins for the crew, cabins for the captain. There was even windows, water casks which would carry the water, the main mast, the less main masts. Just looking at this boat, it's really a marvel. It's honestly breathtaking looking at all the different parts of this ship and how they were able to work in unison in just one vessel. A pirate ship is far more than just a ship for these guys, it's everything. Of course, like I mentioned already, these were their houses. These pirates lived here and they lived under their own captains. They couldn't just walk out in the morning because they're on a boat. They were basically a family. The pirate ship's basically one big community. Everybody works under the captain, sure, but everybody's doing it for their own gain as well. Everybody gains something from getting that money from whoever they're robbing. And everybody puts in their own work to help get the money from the people they're robbing. Whether it's the guy driving the ship, or the guy who's keeping track of where they're going, the guy on the crow's nest watching out for 
any oncoming ships, the dudes on the cannon ready to shoot, or the captain who of course is in charge of planning out the whole operation. The pirates were more than just partners. They were a family, a community. They worked together and they had each other's backs. Except for in the case of mutiny, I guess. <laughs> Looking at Blackbeard's ship alone goes to show that this isn't just any old boat, but this is a pirate ship. This is like taking the construction worker's house and taking his crane and putting them together to make a house crane that also has a jackhammer and every other part of his job inside of it. Basically what I'm saying is that the ship was more than just a boat to these pirates, it was more than just how they moved around, although that was a huge part of it, it was also how they did their jobs and where they lived there out, where they lived out their lives. It's a huge part of pirating. So as you can plainly see, the pirate ship is a crucial part of pirating and how it is done.